Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. All right. So you'll just record it on your computer, John. Yes. Okay. All right. Thankfully, all we have is just one person, and we'll upload the video, so we'll figure it out. Okay. Is are you recording it? Yes. Uh, I think I am. All right. We are now set. So the Planning and Architecture Review Commission of the City of Glendale is now in session. The same the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'll ask the city planner to please call the roll. Uh, yes, Mayor Kennedy. Here. Um, Alderman Bailey. Here. Uh, Ms. Seligman. Is that me? Yes. Oh. So, sorry, I haven't been called this in a very long time. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Commissioner, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cohn. Here. Mr. Story. Here. Ms. Story. And Mr. Atwood. Here. We have quorum. Okay, thank you. All right, so we have uh, adoptions and minutes. There are two minutes that have been presented to us. Um, the first one is the Planning Commission minutes of our last meeting held on April 11th. I'd like to ask for a motion to approve those. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Selig, minutes for second. Second. Second by Commissioner Cohn. Any discussion or any corrections? All those in favor of approving, please say aye. 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 Those no? Motion carries. The second set of minutes, we are gathered now as the Planning and Architectural Review Commission. As of March, the city disbanded the Architectural Review Board and held its last meeting in April. And so um, we now have a handful of those duties. Most of them went to staff. However, if someone buys an undeveloped lot and wants to build a house, wants to do a teardown and a rebuild, we may see those here at the Planning and Architecture Review Commission. Um, if someone wants to build an addition on their home, that also would come before us now. So we handle all the business um, uh, issues as well as a handful of, uh, call them higher end or higher scale residential issues. Um, but most everything else now has been delegated entirely to staff. So many of the things that the Architectural Review Board used to meet for, they no longer, um, those meetings are no longer necessary. So the Architectural Review Board, it's this commission here on the, on the agenda, the Architectural Review Board met on April 20th. Um, Mr. Fellows, these minutes that have been presented, to the best of your knowledge, do those appear to be accurate or accurate reflection of that meeting since none of us here were present? Yes. Okay. So what I'm going to ask, because we can't approve minutes for something that was us. I'm going to oh, ask actually, I did talk to Nathan because the board um, uh, was non-existent. He actually said that you can actually, because you're now acting as what was the previous board, so you can actually approve them. Because we had this conversation of like, well, if we had the ARB convene again, they'd have to approve the minutes, but then we'd have another set of minutes. And so it would be this ongoing ending thing of approval of minutes for ever. So that's where... So what I was just going to do was ask for a motion to direct staff to place the minutes of the last uh, final ARB meeting on file. That's fine too. Okay. Sure. So can I get a motion from a member of the commission? I'd ask you publicly in the meeting if they reflect, and so we'll Correct. just place them on file as the final minutes from the final meeting. That will work. Okay. Can I get a motion then to place the minutes from the final meeting of the Architectural Review Board held on April 20th, 2023 to place those on file? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Sean Story. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Cohn. All those in favor of directing staff to place the minutes of the ARB meeting on, on file, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. All right, we have two items for consideration tonight. One of them is one I know we have been working on for quite some time, it's been through a whole series of uh, rezonings and approvals. And so this is a discussion consideration recommendation to the council for approval of the specific development plan for a planned development district for a meta house at 4160 North Port Washington Road. I will turn it over to Mr. Fellows. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So um, as you're all familiar, meta house is interested in um, purchasing the beer line project that's on Olive Street, as well as sort of the un underutilized parcel that's in the corner of Olive and, and uh, Port Washington Road. You've gone through the general development plan. They've approved that. So what's before you today is the specific development plan. A lot of this information you've already seen, but what you uh, have is some additional information as well as the drawings 
that are in this packet have gone from uh, schematic or preliminary to uh, much more detailed. Um, you also have a, a, a schedule for the project. And um, I'm just scrolling here to get on the screen the, the project. I think this aerial view depicts the existing building fairly well. And then you have a entrance lobby type area here. And then you have the new wing here, which would be more of the residential. Uh, the image in the upper corner shows you kind of that lobby area. Um, and you can see a little bit of the existing building um, and the uh, residential component um, from that perspective. Um, so the, the, all the plans have been, you know, essentially uh, cleaned up and in more detail. Um, from that perspective, the, the courtyard has been developed. I actually think I'm going to go to the landscaping plan. It probably is the uh, is a paving plan and some details. And I think I got to go a couple more here. Uh, so here you can see the landscaping plan. Uh, they have kind of a prairie concept over towards Port Washington Road, which will complement the prairie that's over by the orthopedic hospital that's going to be installed. Uh, you have a very detailed courtyard, um, and a playground, as well as a, an entrance. Um, the uh, one thing that's in the development agreement that will go to city council is that the uh, landscaping could be installed over phases. Um, over a period of time. Uh, they're not sure about how the bids are gonna come out. So they may have to, depending on funding, uh, pace the uh, landscaping out over a couple of seasons, um, which is part of that development agreement, but eventually it would get to this, to this level. Um, and um, there are some details in your packet. Uh, there are details with regard to the uh, fenestrations. So you have brick, you have a metal panel, you have an example here of a window system. And uh, then there's architectural elevations also later in the packet. It's a fairly large packet. Let me find a, a nice elevation here to uh, rest the screen on. Uh, so you have a combination of brick and metal panels. It's a three-story and, and one-story building and, and two stories in various locations. Um, the applicant is here if you have any questions. Um, I think it's, we've talked about it quite a bit through some other approvals. So it should all seem fairly familiar. Sure, I don't have any additional questions. I've been familiar with these plans for quite some time so that you already reviewed them as they went through the uh, rezoning. Mm -hmm. So I guess all of those members of the commission, are there any additional questions at this point? All right, well, we have a recommendation from staff then that we send this over to the Common Council with a recommendation for approval of the specific development plan in conjunction with the development agreement and a fee in lieu agreement and subject to address the comments from Public Works and Engineers. Can I get a motion to that effect, please? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Cohn, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Sean Story. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you for coming out and sitting through our our uh, our clown circus there at the beginning as we're trying to get the technology work. <laughs> yeah. All right. And the second item of uh, new business this evening is discussion and consideration of site plan and architecture review for a proposed exterior modification of Blue Pearl Pet Hospital at 2100 West Silver Spring Drive. And I believe this is essentially to remove the uh, MRI machine in, inside, correct? Yeah, so the existing MRI system, it was originally approved to be located in the alley area. It's actually located in a trailer uh, with a connection element to the building. Um, the MRI machine has not been operating well. They've tried to repair it numerous times. Uh, essentially, they've decided um, to move it inside the building. Uh, with the uh, purchase of the veterinary clinic with, by Blue Pearl, they actually have access space in uh, the building. So with some internal remodeling, they're able to actually move the MRI system inside that will kind of clean up the alley, um, the issues uh, with the MRI um, in the past in terms of noise and vibrations and things like that uh, will uh, definitely go away once it's inside. Um, there are some modifications to the exterior of the building. I'm going to walk you through those really quick. Um, I'm going to open up this new tab. 
And essentially, so you can see uh, in this plan, they're gonna basically take a, a conference room and turn it into an MRI um, facility. Uh, it would be in this portion of the building where there's sort of this curved roof that it kind of pops up. There's two large windows. Essentially, they're gonna take the one window out. That's where the MRI machine would be uh, put into the building. Uh, these two windows will actually have a black uh, film type uh, element added to the glass and they'll have a wall behind it. Uh, this panel down here uh, would actually look more like the glass up above. And um, they have indicated the, the uh, HVAC and other equipment related to um, the MRI would be up on the rooftop. If they need to raise the parapet, they would be able to do that. And uh, it's otherwise, it's a fairly simple project. Um, there's just a couple conditions on there just to uh, kind of reinforce some of the discussion um, that has happened with between staff and the applicant. And um, Hannah Richards, who is the architect for the project, is here if you have any specific questions related to the project. Dr. Otters, who is the vet uh, who uh, we've been working with, he uh, had a flight and was got changed to getting to landing at 550, so he wasn't able to join us. Um, but I uh, had some conversations with them, so I might be able to provide a little bit more detail on the MRI if you're interested. Um, I don't have a question with the MRI. Um, I do just want to clarify that. So the MRI is moving from the back of the building to the front of the building. And so I, I guess the, some of the questions that you raised about the blackout and the windows and stuff, how would you envision those looking something other than empty? Like what, what, what proposals did you make with them? Uh, so um, they originally were going to just choose black and I thought that black would um, seem vacant or dark. I've worked in other projects where they actually can pick a different color. So if you look at the window, it, this is a real picture. You can see that they have a, a, a blind behind it. And so with that glass, you can actually see that um, it shows up as a different color and the blackout film does come in other colors. So the thought was that they could research something other than black to come up with something that looks more like a, a shade that's been pulled down rather than just kind of a black void. Um, you're still gonna get the reflection of trees on the glass and stuff, but they're pretty big windows and they're kind of a prominent feature of the building. So we were a little concerned that them being looking like a black void forever might just seem a little less engaging as you walk by. Okay, and um, does the room have to be entirely blacked out in order to operate an MRI? That's my understanding, okay. but I'm not a medical person. That's just what was pr proposed and not my understanding. Okay. So, and on TV, when you see an MRI, it's always in a windowless room. So, I don't know. When I've taken my kids <laughs> for MRIs, it's always good. Yep, yeah, so. <laughs> All right, those are the questions I have. I'll turn them over to the question. The only question I have is moving the air conditioning units and cooling system to the roof. Will that be an objection to the neighbors? I don't, there already are HVAC systems up there. So I don't imagine that they will be um, different. I, my understanding, the previous complaints were less about, so it was less about the, the, the HVAC, like the, um, uh, the condensers and things, it was more about other types of things, the, the, the noise from the MRI and in that trailer, they like added extra insulation and things like that. So I think uh, the, the equipment on the roof would sound probably just like anything else. It's actually the, the noise of the MRI machine that was sort of bothersome, which now is going to be encapsulated in that building. So uh, the sound shouldn't really move through the building walls. Right, it'll be on the front of the building as well, right now Correct. it's a trailer behind. There's a chiller unit, if I'm not mistaken, it was the chiller that was the cause of concern. And I think that was sitting on the ground right outside that um, yeah. alley. And there was, a, there was a, a fence, so you have this chiller that was probably bouncing around. And then the noise probably went from the noise from the fence onto the brick wall that then went towards the people's houses. Um, so when we originally approve this that was one of the things that we talked about was noise for the neighbors yeah and obviously it was for a while now it isn't i'm just wondering if it's going back that's my only question uh if you'd like to add a condition that says uh something to the effect that 
if we start to receive complaints related to HVAC or an increased amount of noise or something that the applicant will work with staff to provide additional screening or devices that will um, deflect any noise um, away from the residents, we could add something. Given that roof pitch and where I'm assuming the HVAC unit is going to be, if it's going to be more, because right now you can see several of them on the diagram that are in like the middle portion of the building mm -hmm. and from just knowing the sound, because I actually met with a number of the residents when the MRI first went in and you couldn't hear it in people's yards. The problem was the sound from the children was coming basically right over the garages and hitting second floors which for bedrooms. And so I met with a number of the folks there and we'd be standing in a yard and I'm like, I don't hear anything. And they're like, you need to come into our houses. And I went into several of their houses. And when you went upstairs to the back part of the house, you could hear the chiller units in the bedrooms, you know, in several houses all through there, because I met with a number of those neighbors. Um, but if they're moving it now to the front side of the building, you can't hear the HVAC systems currently. I don't, that's, and, and then with the roof pitch, I mean, this is gonna be on the front side of the building. So I don't, I, I think, you have a very valid concern. We should have addressed several years ago, but now with this, I don't. I don't see the level of concern that we're going to see. We could put John's suggestion as a condition. I think it covers ours. If there is a problem, then we can come back to them. Yeah, that's why I, I think adding that would be a plus for us. Sure, H Hannah, would you be able to address that concern about the um, HVAC system? She has her hand up now. Anna, you're unmuted. Go ahead okay. and speak. Can you speak? Can you hear me? I know that it was kind of hard to hear me earlier. Um, if you can hear me, then okay. Hannah, can you start over again? I had to unmute myself. Okay. Um, yes. So if you can hear me now, but can you hear me? I just want to make sure that I can. Yes, yes we're good. Okay, great. Yeah. As far as, um, the chiller and any additional, um, rooftop units that would be required for this specific project, um, I was out there recently and was up on the roof. Um, there is space for it. And between the parapet wall um, and the adjacent kind of two-story portion that's shown in this picture, um, as well as um, the roof, the original roof that was on the back, um, it kind of encapsulates that space. So I, you know, I would say as far as um, experience with other units goes that it's going to be pretty well blocked from any sort of residential areas and any sort of sound that would be in there. Um, I agree that if, you know, there is a concern with it, then I think that John's proposed idea is very reasonable, um, and that we're very open to that if there is an issue with the neighbors. So, um, but I, overall, I would say that generally, if it's on the roof and it's shielded by any sort of parapet or an existing roof, um, we haven't had complaints in the past in previous projects. She agrees that it will be feasible to put it in, John, even for them. So, yeah. So I would suggest that we do put it in as a motion. Okay. But when we get to the motion, why that is condition number four. Thanks. Any other questions? Yeah, Commissioner Yeah, just, just one question, um, which is shown on the screen right here that of the three windows, the, the one on the left and one on the right, have that brick pattern that is not going to be um, replaced. Uh, and it won't look as uniform. Do you need comment to that? Yeah, so I asked the exact same question. So the MRI machine is large enough that that brick has to be removed. And if the MRI, MRI machine ever has to be serviced or replaced internally. That's the only way they can bring it in and out. So they basically are going to have to do a storefront window system, which is what's the upper part of the window is, um, but then they can pop the entire window out and then be able to bring in large parts 
or those types of things. So um, having the brick on the bottom would mean every time they have to do that, they actually have to um, put the brick on and take the brick off and put the brick on and take the brick off. So this, so essentially what that one condition in the uh, staff report talks about is basically um, having those horizontal or vertical mullions coming all the way down to the ground. And then you'd end up with, you know, you'd have, if I, if you looking on the screen, this would come straight down and that would come straight down. So you'd end up with the same pattern. It will just look like a window coming to the grade. So it will um, disrupt this sort of banding that runs underneath all of the windows, but it's really the only solution um, that's kind of out there unless you really wanted it to, to remain brick. Well, I was actually suggesting that the other two windows should maybe do the same to uh, remain uniform. You could, I'd probably uh, counter you with leaving this one because there's other windows about the same size going in either direction. These two are the large ones. So um, modifying this one would make this architectural element here more cohesive. I don't know if that's a possibility. Um, we can see if Hannah um, would want to address that. Uh, yeah, if... Um... So Hannah, could you address that? Our concern is with the one window, the window essentially going all the way to the ground and the one just to the east of it um, remaining. They're both the same large size windows, but the other one having brick for the lower three or four feet, uh, if it might be possible to just have them both be windows that go all the way to the ground just for uniformity in design? Um, I definitely understand where the concern is. Um, I can't truly attest to what the client would be willing to approve and um, what their budget would allow. Um, I think that that would be worth further conversation with them and if that's, um, something that we need to discuss um, in order for approval, then that is something that we can continue the conversation on um, as a potential other meeting with John um, and the client to make sure that everyone is, is on the same page. I, like I said, I understand um, what the visual impact is to it. Um, so I understand the reasoning. Um, but that that would not be something that I would be able to, on my own, authorize that we are doing um, one way or the other. Got it. I understand. Thank you. Um, so, John, I guess timeline wise, if we were to lay this over a month and let you have that conversation with them, um, or I guess probably as a question for Hannah, if we were to lay this over to our next meeting so that staff could work with you and with the uh, with the owners. Um, on this recommendation, because I don't want to put it into a motion and say it has to happen, and then they say they don't want to do it, or um, or you withdraw the proposal. So I guess my question is, um, timeline wise, how does that how would that impact you if we were to consider this beginning of June instead of the beginning of May? Um, I think it depends on the certain amount of risk that the client is willing willing to put in um, to having drawings. This is a you know this is a retain a staff retainage issue um for them um and that's kind of part of the submission um kind of one point that that john um didn't quite touch on um that dr otters i know he's had a conversation with is in the interim um if we they're currently working with the existing mri trailer um but they would like the flexibility to put in a temporary one um, if that one completely fails in the process of construction. So I think that they would be more um, willing, I think, to defer to the next month if they had that ability and flexibility with an additional trailer, if necessary. I think that their ultimate goal, because it is an expense, is to not have to replace that trailer. Um, and we know that the ultimate ideal for the city and this board would be that this is located inside. Um, but I think that if in the meantime, if there's something to happen um, with the current unit while this is under construction and in permitting or anything to that regard um, and something happens to it, that is a staff retainage issue. And with this being one of the few locations with an MRI and with a neurology team, um, I think that that's kind of where the, the pain point would be 
with them trying to defer this to the next month. If that made if that made sense. So I think that that's kind of like a this already has an approval to have an MRI trailer. If there were some reason they needed to bring in a temporary different one uh, for an interim period, that one would require an additional approval from the city. That's already been approved before. It's it's actually part of this application. So Dr. Otters did the application does ask for a temporary in, temporary one if needed um, until the internal one inside one is up and running. Um, right. So we already have one, and it was already approved. Correct. So if they had to swap that one out for a different one in the interim. That wouldn't require city approval. Yes, it was mentioned in the in the filing, but that doesn't yeah. require approval. Probably just some coordination so that we don't block, we let people get their cars out and stuff like that. Sure. Um, maybe what I would suggest is um, kind of a instead of holding it over completely, uh, what we could do is have a motion that. Um, would require to work with staff to come up with a design where both window large windows um, are identical or complementary to each other, probably identical, um, and approve it that way. And if for some reason in the next week or so that doesn't work out, um, we could bring it back in uh, June to you. And if it does work out, then you won't see it again. Um, and so that would allow us to kind of keep moving rather than just putting the whole thing into a big pause for 30 days. That way, at least there's an approval, we can still move forward with permits. And if some compromise can be worked out between staff and um, them, then we can do that. And if for some reason they come back and say, we absolutely can't do that, we have to just keep that brick there for whatever reason, we would just bring it back in June. Um, and then you'd have to decide, you know, kind of what those windows would look like, but they could still, you know, kind of keep moving with the rest of the plans in the next 30 days. Um, I'm, I'm amenable to that. Go ahead, Mr. Um, one other suggestion, maybe if that center window you said is going all the way to the ground, yes, correct. If there's a composite material or something that can go across the bottom equal to what's on the right side as a temporary in the same color, so when you're going by in a car, it looks like the bottom is identical, that might be a fix too. That's another option. The other option is I'm not really one that likes to like. Um, suggest um, masking things with landscaping, but the other option is right now there's really no landscaping in front of it. So if they were to, a cheaper option rather than the brick might be to do some sort of um, landscaping, although that might become problematic having a machine go in and out, they might have to remove the landscaping every so often, but that's another another option out there. <laughs> Yeah, the, the thing is that when Silver Spring was redeveloped, it was redeveloped as part of a plan development. And so the entire, there were design guidelines for the entire Correct. environmental finance district. Correct. And so when this building, when they came before us a few years ago, it's no longer within a TIF, so we came to the planning commission instead of the CDA. But um, this, when they came before us a few years ago for consideration, um, the addition that was built on this we required them to match essentially the existing design mm -hmm. because that met the design criteria for Silver Spring. Sure. And so um, I think I think Commissioner Combs question here about making sure those windows remain in uniformity is being consistent with the Silver Spring B3 district design requirements. So um, I think we could make the motion that they work with staff on developing something where the windows look or at least have an appearance that is the same from the street and then give you the latitude to be able to work with them on that. But sure. I do believe that that you know, the, the issue raised here is consistent with the design requirements for the street. And and if, if for some reason we can't come to a, uh, an agreement that both parties are happy with, we'll bring it back to you in June. Okay. All right. Any other questions, concerns? All right, so we do have a recommendation from staff that has three conditions. Mr. Fellows, how did you word the fourth condition for us? Had to do with the um, the noise issue. You had said something that Commissioner Cohn likes. <laughs> uh, does Ken have it? Uh, the way I took notes, I have it um, listed as subject to the owner working with city, the city and neighbors to mitigate noise and should it arise. Okay, so that would be item. So I'm asking for a motion 
to recommend approval for the site plan and architecture review for Blue Pearl operations, subject to the three conditions that were already mentioned by staff, the fourth condition that has to do with the noise, and the fifth condition that the two windows in the front, um, they work with staff to develop some sort of uniformity or uniform appearance from the street. So that's the fifth condition. So can I get a motion to approve subject to those five conditions? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Cohen, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Atwood. <laughs> because the Christian story you're already in the minutes a couple of times. <laughs> All right. So um, uh, Ms. Richardson, is, is that clear then? You, we, you saw the agenda. There were three conditions that staff already had in here. We've added a fourth that essentially if noise issues should arise, that the owner would work with the neighbors of the city on mitigating those. And then the fifth issue is just to develop some sort of a plan for uniformity um, in those front windows uh, in their street appearance or streetscape. Yes, understood. And we thank you so much for being flexible with us. Okay, thank you. All right, so we now have a motion subject to five conditions. Can I, uh, any further discussion? All right, call for a vote. All those in favor of approving, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. All right, um, our next meeting will be on Tuesday, June 6th at 6 p.m. And uh, if there aren't any announcements or anything, I will take a motion to adjourn, please. Move. Moved by Commissioner Bailey. Is there a second? Or Alderman Bailey, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Cohn. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. We stand adjourned. Second, Alderman.